I'm really happy to be here and happy to share about what I think is one of the most important things that our board is doing. So 2011, we were getting ready to move into a new building. We built a new building on the north side of town and we started talking about gentrification. Like, okay, this is going to be an issue. What are we going to do? And at that time, one of our board members had gone to a two and a half day anti-racism training and found it to be very powerful. Brought it back to the board and said, this is really important work. We all need to be doing this work. And gradually, um, more and more board members um, started doing that training. We decided that we should try to get as many uh, board and staff members to go through that two and a half day training as possible. And currently, eight out of nine, um, our, our board members are trained, and um, most staff, we think, except for maybe three-ish of the newer ones, um, but there's another one coming up in May, and we always aim to be at 100%. And the value of that training is shared language. So we all have kind of a basis of understanding, and it helps us to have conversations, have those important conversations when we all have so, some baseline understandings about um, our, the, how racism plays out in our community. And part of it is acknowledging like our co-op is a very white institution. And, and we had a conversation at my last table about well this you know, diversity versus anti-racism and how complicated that conversation can be and how diversity is a little more mild, a little more palatable um, and easier for people to hear and be a part of. But we felt like we really need to say we want to be anti-racist. We needed to own that identity because racism is so powerful that if we don't make active efforts to break it down and, and see where we are in kind of the continuum, um, that we're not gonna make as much progress as we'd like to, or it's certainly not as fast. And I will say, it still feels very slow going. Um, we still don't feel like we've attracted customers in the neighborhoods where, that we've moved into as much as we'd like to, and we're still very actively working on it and having those conversations. But the trainings are a huge part of it. Um, and so, so getting the board trained, getting the staff trained, um, we, the next step was, um, of course, good, good policy governance board members, we needed to add our anti-racist identity right into our ends. So as one of our sub-ends, um, we are a thriving anti-racist, anti-oppressive cooperative village. And, and that happened, I think, in 2015. And at that time, we also decided that we would have an anti-racism transformation team that would, would be made up of board, staff, and community members. And we spent about two years um, figuring out how that team would work, um, what they would do, um, who they would be accountable to, and how they would be accountable. Um, and we have also added into our executive limitations um, that the general manager shall not fail to have an anti-racism transformation team. And there's a bunch of extra policies about making sure that it's funded and all kinds of other things. And the goal there is to make sure that um, as we have board turnover, if we happen to have a GM turnover, that that work is in place, that we have said this is really important to us and we want it to perpetuate. And we don't want it to be just a passing whim of this current board or this current staff. And so we really felt like laying that groundwork and really uh, taking the time to lay the groundwork was really important to do that. Um, and so we've now had an anti-racism transformation team in place um, for a couple of years and they do a lot of team building among themselves and a lot of additional training in addition to the two and a half day that uh, the board and staff do. Um, and one of the main outcomes of that group are some HR changes that have happened. So they looked into the hiring process and starting to look at who is in the room for interviews and making sure if possible that there is a person of color and or at least uh, if, you know, if there's not able to be a person of color, at least somebody who's been through a training. Um, and also noticed that there were parts of the job application that valued more traditional white dominant culture um, job experiences like education and job history. And so now um, the application says, what relevant experience do you bring? And that just allows people to write down all kinds of things that might make them an asset to our co-op. Um, and we put our anti-racist values right on the job application. So we're letting people know if you're applying, this is what you're signing up for and this is important to us. So 
as a result of those things, we now have more people of color in leadership positions than ever before, and also more staff people in general. Um, and you know, it's true to say that we still have overall a white dominant culture going on, but there's definitely been a shift. And even little things like the front end people choose the music that's being played, and it's maybe a wider variety now that it's a wider variety of people. And of course, the goal is that you know, as um, as it was mentioned, like the, having the staff represent the community that we want to bring in. And um, we want it to go faster and, and be bigger and better. And it does feel frustrating because it feels like, yeah, we are making these changes, but we're not seeing huge immediate results. And as everybody has talked about, you know, there's the price and accessibility product mix, all of those extra challenges. But we are definitely doing what we can and we have noticed a shift. Definitely feels different. Um, so the way that we have conversations about product mix and pricing availability, um, it, it's you know it's we're a little we're able to have those conversations without people exploding, um, and and because of that shared language and the trainings and um, the kind of shift in attitudes. So all these important conversations that all all of us boards are having and staff are having, that can happen in a different way. And, um, and it is, as I said, uh, definitely a process. There are lots more conversations to be had, um, but it's, you know, it's important to keep having those conversations and just stay on the path. Um, the, uh, in the policy, in the executive limitations policy, there is a mandate um, about the anti-racism transformation team. So that's that. And... Um, we just found it really important to put it all in writing and, um, and make it available to everybody who's involved. So, of course, our GM monitors this, and um, we see how we're doing on that. And the anti-racism transformation team came up with a vision statement. Um, and this is basically what we are doing or, or you know, what we are trying to do. 